Gulf Shores man here. I'm out in the man cave today, and we're going to be talking about this new Hummingbird Helix G4N chirp with mega side imaging and mega down imaging. Uh, I'm going to describe all the different connectors that I had to buy to connect them up on my one boat network, which we did not use through Ethernet. We're going to be using it through uh, NMEA 2000. So we're going to look at all the different connectors I bought, all the stuff that I've got here. We're going to take them out of the box, check them out, see what we got. And we're going to get them put in the boat, and then we're going to get out on the water and see how good they work. So let's see what we got here. Let's open up this Hummingbird Chirp Mega DI. So what we've got in the box here, we've got the unit itself, 7 inch, I already have a 7 inch in my boat now, uh, but it's not a mega side image or mega down image, and it's only a G2N. This is the latest iteration, it's the G4N, which has a whole lot more connectivity, and also it has the NMEA connector, so we don't have to use a conversion box like you had to do on the G1, 2, and 3 ends. It's all completely incorporated inside of the unit now. So we're going to see how that's going to work out. We've got several different options that we're going to be doing with transducers and uh, other options that come with the unit. So we'll set that aside. Of course, we've got the instruction manual. We've got the transducer, which is a 490306-1. And this is the side and down imaging mega transducer. Got the little windows on the side for the side imaging quite a bit bigger than the other transducer that we've got now and you got your regular stuff you got you got your mount and your gimbal and your transducer mount and your stickers and all that kind of good stuff so we'll set that aside and then we'll take a look at what we got else we got well there's a lot of different things we had to buy uh years ago i fooled with harley davidson's and we would say that the hd stood for a hundred dollars every time you needed something it was a hundred dollars well, now I'm into Hummingbird and uh, HB, so we're going to call that 100 bucks. So not only do we get the unit, we still have to buy all these accessories to get it to work like we want it to work. So all that adds up. So we'll talk about the price. We're going to talk about the part numbers that we got. So we'll start with the Helix unit. I got this on Black Friday at Academy. Uh, it's a part number 411650-1. And it's a Chirp Mega SI Mega DI G4N Helix 7, 7 inch. It comes with the transducer XNT9HWT. That's the transducer we just talked about. And I got this at Black Friday at Academy in Foley, Alabama for $849. That sounds like a good deal. But here in Alabama, we have 11% tax, so we had to add on to that. So the whole price went up. Well, I get it home, and I start looking at my boat and seeing how I'm going to try to get this thing configured in there. And then I had to figure out all the other stuff I had to buy. So let's see what else I had to buy. Well, one thing I bought because I have a Suzuki DF-115 on my boat four cycle, I want to be able to incorporate more information from my engine to my dash panel so I can see precise fuel usage, my trim angles, better pressures on my water, oil pressures, oil temperatures, stuff like that. Instead of just having just a warning light on the dash, that down here when we go out in the Gulf, that's big water. So we get to make sure we have to be as safe as we can be when we go out there and we need as much information as we can to be told to us on the dashboard so we can exactly know how to get back if we get out too far. We know how far we can go, how far we can come back, exactly our fuel usage, things like that. This particular interface cable is a Suzuki NMEA 2000 interface cable and it's a 990C0-88149-357. Well, the cheapest place I found this at was at Parts View, P A R T S V U. Uh, it's online uh, with shipping and everything. It was $130.23. That's for tax and all. Locally, I could have got the unit for $139, plus I'd had to pay that 11% tax. So it was cheaper for me in the long run to go ahead and buy the thing from Parts View. The next thing I had to get was a fuel level sensor means that we're going to be converting our analog fuel level in our tank. We have a 50-gallon tank. 
we're going to be converting that over to digital so it can show up on the Humminbird display screen. A better, more accurate reading. So this was the uh, this was the the Lawrence fuel level sender. It's a X 35 HQMET, and I'll be putting these part numbers on the screen so you know exactly what you got to buy and how much it's going to cost you. And uh, this particular unit was one hundred eight dollars and eighty eight cents. I'm thinking it's going to do what I need it to do, but if it doesn't, I may have to add another $100 piece to it, which is a little small computer that also hooks into the NMEA cable, NMEA 2000, which is a management system that helps me calculate. I hope I don't have to have it. I hope I have enough to do what I need to do now, but if I have to get that, I will. And it'll be easily connected up to the backbone of the MNEA. Another thing that I had to get was a, a transducer Y connector. Because apparently on these Mega SI and Mega DI transducer, it really doesn't give a lot of information at high speed on the depth. It kind of flakes out. So the option is I have a Humminbird Helix 7 on there now, a G2N. And I'll keep that same transducer that's on there. And what I'll do is I'll bring it up to a Y cable. They make a special Y cable. To bring two transducers into one Humminbird unit. And one of them is for the side imaging. And down imaging and the other one is for the dual beam so I got a dual beam on there now I'll connect that up and I'll connect this up and seamlessly we will have both transducers so I'll have the, the uh, frequency response for the mega side of it and then I'll also have the speed availability from the dual beam radar that I have on there now another thing that we had to have let's see what that thing costs what was that we got it right here. Okay, it's the Humminbird 720101-19 MSIDBY cable. I got it at Amazon for $35.19. Another thing I had to buy was the Helix NMEA 2000 adapter cable. And what this does, this comes from the backbone of the unit over to the back of the Helix unit. Uh, this backbone cable was, uh, let's see here. Got it all here somewhere. It's the Humminbird 720114-1 Helix G4N NMEA 2000 30 inch adapter cable. I got that from his Amazon for $25.63. And as you'll see, it plugs into the back of the, the Humminbird. Helix 7, and then it connects up to your NMEA backbone. Another thing I bought was the NMEA backbone starter kit. That's this unit right here. And I got it from Amazon and it, from uh, Novino. And uh, it's $64.99 at Amazon. So we got that going on. And what you'll see with it is we've got a couple of what they call drops. It has a power. We have to power this up to boat power. This is actually what's called a CAN bus system, the same system that they have in cars. But in my opinion, after working on cars for 40 years, uh, this is much simpler. I wish we would have had these in cars. We could have had a lot easier time to go. But what happens is we got this power coming in, and each one of these are a drop that goes to a different sensor. Okay, and then on each end of these, we have a couple of 120 ohm resistors. They're called terminating resistors. You can't run this thing with any of these open because if you run them with an open, it won't work. So we have to make sure that we have a way to connect these resistors up to terminate the ends of that. And then again, we have a couple of drops that came with it to go to our different units. And another thing that makes me madder than a one-legged waitress at IHOP is that why can't Humminbird provide a cover? I had to buy a cover for it. The cover was $21.59. I didn't go with the $50 hard plastic cover. I have this cover on my Helix 7 now. I like it just fine. It's a padded cover. It gives a little bit more protection. So I just went and got another one of these for this unit too because I plan on moving the Helix 7 up to the front of the boat, the G2N. So I can put a transducer on my Minn Kota, uh, Riptide, and then I'll have some information at the front of the boat on what the front of the boat water depth is. When we get down here, we get up in these intercoastal waterways and we get up in the, the bays and areas like that. The water gets real skinny. 
a little lagoon. The water can be two foot deep. So when you're fishing, you know you have a five foot drop off and it immediately jumps up to where it's dangerously shallow. If you're up in the front of the boat controlling the Minn Kota, you can easily say, guess what? I'm shallow up in the front of the boat. I got to figure out what to do. So we have that. And that's pretty much got all the different things that we need. We got one other thing. There's another cable coming. It didn't come in today, but it's called a Humminbird Advanced Adapter Accessory System Cable. $41.72 from Amazon. And what it does, it comes out of the COM port on the back of the Humminbird. And it has a Y. Here's the COM port. It has a Y that takes one will go to a external GPS antenna with a heading sensor. And the other one comes out to where it can be output to MNEA0183, which is the older standard. And uh, this unit will output that also. and It'll come out of that Y cable. And we'll connect this to it. And then that will go to our Cobra VHF radio. So it will give us longitude and latitude off of the GPS of this unit straight to the radio so that we can have, do DCS and we can make calls to the Coast Guard. And when we do, it will automatically give our position longitude and latitude. It's got to be, it's a very safe thing to do down here because if you get in trouble out there on that big water, you got water coming on board, you got a fire, you got someone that's sick or in an emergency. Instead of having to look up on your hummingbird what your longitude and latitude is, it will automatically transmit that to the Coast Guard through this cable right here. So when you hit your man overboard, whatever you got, this information is going straight to the Coast Guard. Very safe thing to do. Now let's take a look at the back of this unit here and see what we've got. We've got the power. We've got the NMEA. We've got the COM port. We've got the transducer. And we have, uh, I forgot what that port is, but let's see what we got here. So what we'll do is we're going to make sure that we start with our transducer. And it says that this one right here is going to be the side imaging, down imaging. So we'll connect that in there. Just like that. And then when I get it in the boat, I will connect it up to the, the dual beam out this side. So I have both transducers reading off of one hummingbird unit. Then it's going to connect up right here to where the transducer goes in. Just like that. And then we've got this NMEA cable that's going to come in here. And we're going to connect it up to the NMEA output, which is a NMEA standard, National Marine Electronics Association standard. And we'll connect that in. That will go here. Then we will connect this cable up to one of our backbone drops. So these are keyed where you can only get them one way. They're only going one way. There it goes. It's in now. We'll get those snugged up. They have O-rings in there to keep them watertight. Now we're connected through NMEA 2000 to the Humminbird unit. We'll connect this up to switched power in the boat. Then the next thing that we're going to get is we have to make sure we put in these terminating resistors. Got to have those. And they also have O-rings in them for, to seal them up from the water. Get it lined up with the key. Turn it in. Tighten it up. No problem. Now we also have one for the other end. It's an opposite. This is a male going to a female. We get it lined up, connect it up just like this. Now we have our NMEA backbone connected. Then the next thing we'll do is we're going to connect up our Suzuki interface. The Suzuki interface was another $140. Like I said, we got that through parts uh, VU. And it will go in and connect up to another one of our drops on the on the down on the output of the CAN bus system. So it's going to go in here just like that, and we'll run it back to the outboard through all of its conduit and through it all of its different areas. And we have two plugs on this. This plug goes into the output of the interface the digital interface on the Suzuki engine, and this one goes over to the trim. So I think my boat has this. If not, I won't be able to use this. I'm hoping it does. I hope that there's a place to plug this in. I don't know how. It's got to be able to get trim angle somehow. So we'll get that plugged in. The instructions tell us all how to calibrate that and get it where we need it to be. And then the last thing is we've got this dead gone 
fuel level sender. And what we'll do is we'll take the wires loose from the back of the gauge that's in the boat, the analog gauge, and we'll connect this up. This is calibrated to the marine standard of the ohms that required for the level sensors on the fuel level. And then we'll take and connect it up to here. And hopefully, after we connect all this stuff up, this is all the stuff that we need. We got one more cable that's coming. It's going to come out of this one right here. That's an advanced adapter accessory cable. It's going to come out of this COM port right here. And it's going to connect up to this plug here that's going to go to our Cobra VHF radio so we can get that vital longitude and latitude information over to the radio. So when we have an emergency and we contact the Coast Guard, they know exactly where they're at and exactly where to send some help to. Hopefully this is a start and we can see what's going to happen. Next step is we'll go to the boat out in the driveway. Uh, it's going to storm this weekend, so it's still covered up. So maybe at the first of the week, the weather will break and we'll get out there and we'll get that thing connected up. I'll show you all the ins and outs of running the wires and using fish tapes to drag the wire through the very difficult parts of the boat. And after that, I've got four more speakers. I got four more kicker speakers I'm going to install. So I'll show you how we do that at the same time. And when we get all this wrapped up, we'll take that thing down to the water and see what we got. So stay tuned for part two. And like I said, I will post all the part numbers online on the video to show you exactly what you need to have. And if you like this video, please subscribe and like uh, Gulf Shores Man. I've got a channel. I got to cover all kinds of things. That's Gulf Shores activity. If you wonder where Gulf Shores at, it's in lower Alabama. We're right on the water. We're right next to the big water, the, the big Gulf. So uh, if you like what we got here, hit that button and subscribe and give us some help out. And uh, until then, we'll see you then. Thanks.